And now, the continuing story of another world. At first I thought that Clarice must have been mistaken. I mean, whenever I've seen the both of you, you always look so happy together. We were very happy. You know, I've always thought that Jerry was a terrific guy. And I've always been very envious of your relationship. Jerry is a terrific guy. Things changed. You fell out of love with him? No. Sally, I love him now more than I ever did. Do you mind if we sit down for a second? Sally, sometimes I think I'm a person that's never going to be happy. Jerry did everything anybody can do to make me happy. What went wrong, Blaine? I fouled it up. There is something inside of me that just won't let things be. What did you do to make Jerry walk out on you? Sally, if I could tell somebody about it, I would tell you, but I just can't. From what Clarice said, it... It sounded like there was another man. It's not that simple. Is it Buzz? No. It's not Buzz. Oh, okay, okay, look. Blaine, you and I used to be so close. You know, I, I want to... I want to help you. I want to find out what's going on, but you are being no help at all. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? It has nothing to do with trust. Look, if Jerry wants to tell you what happened, then that's fine. I'll go along with everything he says. But you're still not going to tell me your side of the story. No. <sighs> Blaine, I don't know what's going on. All I know is I don't understand you at all. You will. If Jerry decides to talk, then everybody's going to understand. Jerry, I'll tell you something. I've been fronting for Blaine for years. I pulled her out of a lot of scrapes, and I've defended her from a lot of people that she's hurt. And I've had it. As far as I'm concerned, the person we're talking about is a total stranger. Does that mean you don't want to listen to me? No, come on. Jerry, look, if you want to talk, I want to listen. Okay, first. Tell me if you've seen Blaine since I walked out. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen her. Did you go over that same night? The next morning. What did she tell you? Nothing. Nothing at all. What, look, look, uh, did she seem upset? Yeah, yeah, she seemed upset, all right. Well, then she must have told you something. L Larry, you're her brother. Hasn't she always confided in you? Look, she confides in me when their back's up against a wall. This time I got a royal runaround. Are you being straight with me? Yeah, Jerry, I don't, I don't have any reason to lie to you. This whole thing is so strange. You haven't even seen her since you walked out? No. And frankly, I don't want to. But my mom thinks I owe it to her to give her another chance. Why? Mom knows something, but she won't tell me what it is. She's, she just keeps saying that Blaine's in some kind of trouble. She can't uh, give you any idea what it might be? No, no, she won't give me a clue. But she insists that I give Blaine a chance to explain before I move out for good. So your things are still over there at the apartment, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to make a point of going over when Blaine's there. Well, don't get your hopes up. What's that supposed to mean? Look, hey, nothing I know about Blaine is going to help you. Look, Larry, as angry as... As angry as I am at Blaine, I still love her. Those feelings don't just disappear overnight. Larry, if there's anything you can say or do to help us, please, please don't hold back on me now. 
All right, Jerry, I'm going to lay it out for you. Now, Blaine didn't tell me anything about what was happening. Now, at first, I really thought it was Buzz. But now, now I'm not so sure. No, no, I know it's not Buzz. Well, well, then at least she's telling the truth about something. What do you think it is? You mean, who do I think it is? Who? It's definitely another guy. And from what Mom says, Blaine's in way over her head. Blaine, you are being so cryptic. You, you've just got me confused. I am confused. Okay, I'll buy that. But uh, there is something that you're not telling me. Sally, I just can't. What, do you think I'm going to judge you or something? No, I, I don't want to get you involved in something that you can't do anything about. And you're telling me that Buzz has absolutely no connection. Oh, Sally, I don't care if I never see Buzz again. Is it someone else? I don't want to talk about this. All right. Then I assume from your answer that the answer is yes. Forget about it, Sally. Just forget about me. OK, OK, now you're being ridiculous. I'm not going to forget about you. And if it is another man and you still are in love with Jerry, then things can be worked out. You're wrong. You said you still love him. More than anything. Well, then for Pete's sakes, you've got to talk to him. You've got to pray that he'll forgive you. I mean, it's worth a try, isn't it, Blaine? I wish it were that simple. It is that simple. If you just tell Jerry what's going on, if you just open up to him, Blaine. Look, are you listening to anything I'm saying? What are you thinking? I was just thinking how I... I'm going to get even with everybody that wrecked my marriage and my life. Everybody? Who's everybody? You're really serious, aren't you? Yes. You think that's Jerry? Fat chance. Who is it? Margo, Blaine. Hi. Hi, Sally. Hi, Margo. Well, I'm glad to see you're not alone. Ah, I don't think I've been much help. You couldn't be, Sally. Even Margot knows that. No, I don't know that. But I'm going to let Jerry handle it. <sighs> Jerry doesn't want to have anything to do with me. Oh, that's funny. He told me he was going to see you today. He said that? After a little talking to from me. Well, it must have been some talking to. It was. What did you say to him? That you love him and that he loves you and that... When there's love in a marriage, then that's worth fighting for. What are you going to do, Blaine? You're going to talk to him? Sally, last time I talked to him, I just made everything worse. Well, now I've gotten you a reprieve. And believe me, it wasn't easy. Do it. What would it accomplish? It might accomplish a lot if you'll give Jerry some answers. There aren't any, any answers. Well, I think there are. And I'm not going to stand by and watch you two break up without at least making some effort to understand one another. Oh, Jerry is so easy to understand. He's a kind, wonderful man that thought he got himself a good wife. So I'm impossible to live with. Well, he forgave you when he found out about that buzz. This is worse, much worse. Blaine, what is going on with you? You don't understand. Margo doesn't understand. But I cannot see Jerry again without making it much tougher on both of us. Speaking of uh, frame of mind, I think yours could use some improvement. Is there something bothering you? Nothing I want to talk about. Oh, kid, you're still really upset about losing your job at the hospital. It's part of it. Oh, darling, don't make me guess because I do want to help. It's going to happen to me, Miranda. Are you sure they'll never give you your job back? No, they won't. And I don't blame them. I could have really hurt somebody. Kid, anyone could have done that mix-up. No, no, anyone couldn't have. Anyway, I was on trial at the hospital, and all the commotion about my returning, 
On top of which, the mix-up with the medication, it was just the last straw. All right. Maybe you should consider doing something else, kid. After all, you have an excellent college education. Oh. Yeah, my education, except for nursing, prepared me to make witty, uh, appropriate conversation at cocktail parties, and that's about it. Hmm, too bad we can't all be paid for that. Uh, I can't do anything that puts me in the public eye. At least not for a couple months. Darling. I want you here with me anytime you want to come over. You know that. Thank you. This is about the only place I can go outside of the apartment. Oh, dear. Weren't you and Joey considering buying a house not too long ago? Yeah, but um, without my job, we can't really think about it right now. Uh, well, that's too bad. I mean, if you had a house, you certainly would have plenty to do. Yeah. <laughs> I could garden. So curtains. <laughs> you really make a, a home for us. What would really be great would be just to have my own backyard where I could go out and sit whenever I want to. <laughs> Kid, please don't take this the wrong way, but you have the money and you could have a home if you chose to. Uh, but Joey doesn't, doesn't want us to use family money. Even if it would make you happier. It wouldn't make me happier, not knowing how he feels about it. You love him very much, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes, and you'd do anything for him. Yes, I would. Then he should be willing to do anything for you. He is willing. Uh, short of letting you make a down payment on a house. Aunt Miranda, Joey loves me, and that is enough. The house can wait. I just don't see, darling, why it has to. I've told you why. Well, I don't know why Joey can't bend just a little this time. Okay, I think, I think we've had enough talk. Hey, now, I know what's wrong with you now. You think I'm harping on you again. No, no, I don't feel that at all. I just, I'm feeling a little restless, that's all. Why don't you take a swim? No, I've already done 30 laps. <laughs> 30 you. laps already. I think I'll go home and clean or something. Clean your house. Uh -huh. Every time I have seen your apartment, it is immaculate. Well, then you don't look very critical because my rug needs shampooing. Uh, I've got to defrost the refrigerator, mm -hmm. kitchen cabinets, everything. What a dreadful way to spend an afternoon. It makes me feel good. At least I'm accomplishing something. I can't see how or why. Well, then maybe you should let Mary go for a few days and try it. It's good for the soul. Uh -huh. Okay, Willis, I said I was sorry. Yes, I've made a little note. I'll keep it right here by the phone. Mm -hmm. Um, darling, somebody just came in, so I have to hang up now. Okay, pumpkin, so do I. Bye, dear. Hi, T. Hello, busy lady. <laughs> that was Willis. I made a mistake again. I woke him up in the middle of the night. <laughs> well, it is difficult to remember the time difference, isn't it? The time difference? I have trouble remembering what day it is there. <laughs> Let alone the season. I'm hip. How is Willis? Oh, he's all right. Considering I woke him up in the middle of the night in the middle of winter. No, he says he's getting along really well there. I think Willis will be quite a success there, especially with Max backing. Sure. I just feel so removed, so far away from everything he's experiencing. Well, you are far away from him, Gwen. Oh, I don't only mean mile-wise. feel it in every other way, too. Have you made a decision about what you're going to do yet? <sighs> no. I suppose I only have two choices, though. Either move to Australia or... try to keep my marriage going long distance, I guess. Well, that works for some people. Well, anyway, I mustn't bore you with my personal dilemma. Oh, you're not boring me in the no, least. No, no, I know that you're waiting for my decision as to whether I'm going to design and build your converter plant for you. Have you given that any more thought? I've thought of almost nothing else. Are you sure that I'm not going to be in over my head? No, not with Rick giving you technical assistance. 
and I'll put my entire engineering staff at your disposal. Oh, well, thanks. I'll certainly need them if I decide to take this job. So when can I expect your answer? Oh, T, I, I don't mean to keep you waiting around like this on purpose. Just that, well, this decision will infect about ten other decisions I have to make. And I'm going to ask you to just be indulgent with me and wait for a little bit more. You, you look a little upset, Margot. Have you had some bad news from the IRS? Uh, no, this concerns something else, a, a personal matter. Something you want me to help you with? Yes, if you don't mind. Of course I wouldn't mind. You've been so wonderful with business advice, I, I sense that you'd be the same way with personal advice. <laughs> well, that's very flattering. All right, please tell me what the problem is. Well, it's Blaine and Jerry. They've split up. Oh, I'm sorry. What a shame. Yes, it is a shame, because I am convinced that there's no good reason for this marriage to end. Have you told Jerry and Blaine that? Yes, at the risk of interfering. And I've finally gotten Jerry to agree to talk to Blaine again. When is he to do this? Today. Well, if you can keep them talking, you're on the right track. I think the rest is up to them. Well, actually, it's, it's up to Blaine. She's got to decide whether she can be honest with Jerry. Well, I'm afraid I don't know much about their situation, Margot. Jim, listen. I feel I have to tell someone this, and I know I can rely on you not to repeat it to anybody else. Well, of course I won't repeat it if you ask me not to. You remember the other night when we ran into Blaine at the arena? Yes. Jerry had disappeared, and uh, she was trying to find him. That was her story then, but the, the truth is quite another matter. What do you mean? Jerry was at the law library studying that night. Blaine was there with another man. How do you know that? Coincidentally, the police department had sent an undercover agent there to check the place out. He spotted Blaine, and, and he told Jerry about it. Who was the other man? Well, Jerry doesn't know this yet, but he's a wheeler dealer from Las Vegas named Jordan Scott. You mean you know that and you haven't told Jerry? Well, I'm hoping that Blaine will do that. How did you find out the man's name? He was with Blaine at the apartment the other morning, and I recognized him. Fortunately, he didn't recognize me. Wait a minute. Are you saying you knew this fellow before? Hmm. He operated in Las Vegas for a while, and he is bad news, Jim. Very bad news. What did he do? Well, I can't tell you anything about his uh, professional activities, if you want to call them that. But he must have fouled up somewhere along the line because the gaming commission forced him out of town. Oh. Well, I guess it's no surprise, then, that he'd be frequenting a place like the arena. As a matter of fact, he's one of the owners. Oh? Weren't you thinking of taking a job there? I was, but I've decided against it. I don't think the place is clean, Jim. And I wouldn't have even considered working there if I'd known that Jordan Scott had anything to do with it. How'd you come to know him? He dated a girl that was in the line with me at the palace. Oh. I think he killed her. What? She OD'd on pills and was found floating in a swimming pool. The official story was suicide, but a lot of us thought that something else happened to her. And that means that Blaine is now mixed up with this same man? Mixed up how? I don't know just yet. But I do know that she's in danger, and somebody's got to help her get out of it. Uh, excuse me, Margo. I want to hear more about this as soon as I see who's at the door. Oh, Jim, I'm so glad you're here. What's going on? I had well, something I'm so worried about, and I didn't know where to turn. Looks like it's going around. Now I have two things to worry about. Liz, Margo is here about a personal problem. I thought Jim was a tax consultant, not a therapist. I thought you said you were here about a personal problem. Jim and I are old friends. Jim and I are new friends. Well, have you gotten your tax situation all straightened out? Liz, please. Margot's here about quite a serious situation. Well, so am I. It's, it's OK, Jim. Let Liz tell you what's wrong. All right, Liz, I'm listening. I had a phone call from a friend. 
A friend at the hospital who works in administration. Not more gossip. No, it is not gossip. It's fact. Did you know that Russ was not on his honeymoon? Of course they are. Tracy and he left right after the wedding. No, that's what I thought, too. But my friend says he is still at the hospital. Your friend is mistaken. No, she is not. In fact, she said he was scheduled for surgery this morning. Maybe your friend has Dr. Matthews mixed up with somebody else. She's known him for years. I hardly think that's likely. Does that mean that Russ and Tracy never left on their honeymoon? Yes, that's exactly what it does mean. Well, that's very strange. Do you suppose that, that there could be some trouble between Russ and Tracy? Joey, I really appreciate you coming out here like this. I hope it didn't inconvenience you too much. No, not really. As I said to you on the phone, I would have been delighted to come into town to meet you. No, I have some time off from work. I don't have to be back there for a while. I thought Kim was supposed to be here. Yes, she was here, but she left. Well, she told me earlier that she was going to be here all day. Yes, she was, but she changed her mind. What, is there something wrong? Yeah, I think so, and I think that's what I want to talk to you about. Well, what's Can't the problem? Just sit down. Hmm? What's the problem here? The problem, Joey, is Kit's life. You mean Kit's life? Kit's life, or what the point I'm really trying to make is her lack of life being cooped up in that apartment all the time with nothing to do. Well, that's going to change once publicity dies down. You know, then we're going to move. Joey, you've been saying that for a long time, and the publicity does not seem to be dying down at all. And now Kit doesn't even have her job to go to. Oh, I see, and, uh... You want to give me advice about all this, huh? Yes, I do, and I think it's high time you relented a little. Relented about what? About Kit being able to live the kind of life that she was used to. Kit doesn't want to live that kind of life. Oh, uh, well, I don't think she's terribly happy with the alternative, do you? Well, either am I, but I don't know what to do about it. No, well, I do. I think that you should let Kit use some of her own money to make things better. No, I can't do that. Joey, why not? I, think of all the possibilities it could create. You could buy a house and have a garden, and, and she'd have tons of things to do just to keep that running smoothly. She's going to have a lot to do anyway. We just have to be patient. That's all there is to it. But why wait when she is so miserable? Oh, and you think buying a house is going to solve the problem? Well, I think it would certainly help the problem a lot, yes. Oh, come on, Joey. Everyone has accused you up until now of marrying Kit for her money, so what? difference does it make? It makes anymore? a difference to me. I mean, I have to live with myself. Kid has to live with me. Darling, we are living in liberated times uh -huh. now. These uh -huh. are times when a woman asks a man out for a date, when a, when a wife makes more money than her husband does. Why don't you just give a little? I guess I'm old-fashioned, and I just wasn't brought up that way. Oh, yes, I can imagine what your mother taught you about these you things. Leave my mother out of it. Joey, Miranda. we both know how prejudiced your mother is about people who have money now. Do you want to be accused of being the same way? Look, the life that kid was leading before, right? She was Kit Farrell. Kit Farrell didn't have any money. You're both dreaming if you think you can go back to that. Joey. Kit Farrell ceased to exist as soon as your pictures hit that newspaper. Yeah, she became Kit Perini. Why are you prolonging all this unhappiness? Look, if we do with what you're saying, then we're not going to be able to stop. We're going to have to get the house, then we're going to have to get someone to take care of the house, then we're going to have to get another oh, house. Oh, Joey, that's, that's big enough. absolutely ridiculous. It doesn't have to be that way. Well, we'll just wait till all the publicity dies down. The publicity is not going to die down while you're living this unnatural life. What's so unnatural about it? Because you are both prisoners. Oh, it's only for a while. The press is not going to stop with you, Joey, until you start living the way they want you to. Let Kit see her old friends and be with the surroundings that she's used to. And the press will say, see, they're doing just what we predicted, and they will finally give up. I don't want to do what the press predicted. Oh, um... All right, I guess, I mean, I should have known that I couldn't win, at least not with you. Put any pressure on Kit about this? No, I didn't put any pressure on Kit. Did kids. you mention it to her? Yes, I did, because I couldn't keep quiet about and it any longer. what did she longer. say? Just about what you said. Okay. I don't even know why we even started this conversation. Then. Jolly, wait, uh, wait a minute. Uh, I'm... I wanted to 
put this to you in the gentlest possible way, and I have succeeded in offending you. Miranda. I'll get over it. <laughs> I, yeah, you probably will. And I probably will, too, but I will probably learn not to interfere anymore. Uh, I appreciate very much you coming out and saying what you think. I hope you're still coming to my party tomorrow. Yes, yeah, mm. we'll come, but you know how I am with parties. I, pro I made such an effort to invite all the people well, you'd be you really invite? comfortable with. Uh, uh, Rachel and Matt. Oh, yeah, Kit told me that they were coming. All right. All right, I promise you that this will be a kind of party that even your uh, far-out brother-in-law will feel comfortable with. Oh, well, far-out Rick will feel far-out, then I guess I could feel far-out at the party. <laughs> I gotta get back to work. I'll right? see you tomorrow night. Right. Oh. It's going to be some kind of party. Kit and Joey. If I could just think of something to guarantee my enjoying the party. I know, maybe I'll just uh, put a little more mix in the party. Uh, yes, may I speak to Mitch Blake, please? Thank you. And now, the next part of Another World. houses that you liked. Oh, one in particular. Few possibilities. But this uh -huh. one is owned by a musician, and he has a whole room set up for recording. Really? Yes, but there are problems with the rest of the house, so oh, of course. maybe next week, if we still have to stay here, you will go looking with him. I would love to. In fact, I find that I will be here. We won't be able to get away for another week or two. Oh, you didn't get anybody to cover for you. No, I didn't, darling. There is such a shortage of trained staff. Well, you know what you have to do about that, don't yes, you? Yes, I have to hire more staff, and I am going to the moment we return from our trip. Anything that gives us more time together. Hey, tell me something. What? Why are we talking so much about the hospital? It does take up a big part of our lives as it is. Well, what would you like to do? Oh. <laughs> We're not going to answer. Okay. <laughs> Wait what? a minute. <laughs> what? Are you all right? Yes, what? I ordered flowers. I forgot all about them. That must be them. Flowers. She ordered flowers. You should see what I do. What is it? I came as soon as I heard. Her what? That you weren't on your honeymoon, that you were cooped up in this apartment. Oh, but, but Liz... Rush, we... what are you doing here? I live here, Liz. Honest. <laughs> uh, we're married, remember? Oh, my. Oh, my. I... I don't understand this at all. Why doesn't anybody ever tell me anything? Liz, I don't want you to think I'm being rude, but really I haven't got time for long explanations, neither does Tracy. Well, is everything all right between the two of you? Yes, everything's just fine, just fine. I mean, if I was called back to the hospital, we can't get away for a couple of weeks. That's you all. mean your honeymoon is postponed, not canceled? That's it, exactly, yes. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? I think I just did, Liz. Well, as long as I'm here, I have something I have to discuss with oh, you. Oh, come on, come on. Can't it possibly wait for another time? Oh, if only it could. <clears throat> no. Uh, all right, what, what, what is it? Well, Tracy, you're a member of this family. I want you to hear this, too. Okay, Liz, please, do have a seat. But remember, we are, in fact, at this very moment, already on our honeymoon. Thank oh, you. thank you very much. I understand completely. The problem is your father. What's the matter with my father? Now she's coming to him with her personal problems. What? what? 
are you talking about? Who is she? She, that fan dancer from Las Vegas. I thought you'd gone home. Glad I caught you. What's up? Nothing much. I thought maybe you'd like to have a beer after work. You know what? We must be on the same wavelength. I was thinking the same thing. Sit. No, wait, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. Come here, come here. I want to talk to you. Sit. Sit. Thank you. No, wait, I'm, not, I'm serious here. There's something that's been bugging me, and uh, I want your opinion on it. Okay. Shoot. Am I wrecking Kit's life? <laughs> no, no, seriously. Seriously. Well, you've seriously. been reading the newspapers again. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just wondering, like, what kind of life she would have had, you know, or, or, or how she would be living if, if she never met me. I don't know. She'd probably still be working at the hospital. I have a couple dozen doctors chasing after her. All right, let me, let me ask you. OK, let's just say, what kind of life do you think Kit would have if, if, you know, she never went through that Kit Farrell stuff? You know, she was just Kit Holloway. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm, mm. That's a toughie. Well, you said once before that, that she was a lot like Amy. Well, yeah, but that was, that was before the kidnapping. You have to understand that she went through some pretty radical changes after that. Yeah, she, she had that nervous breakdown. Yeah. She set it head in the same direction my mother went until she decided to drop out of sight and change her identity, so. So what would happen if she never got kidnapped? Well, she's probably been married and divorced by now. Just like Amy and the rest of our friends in Philadelphia. Mm, so she wouldn't be very happy. Take it from me, Joey. I know that world. And once you get caught up into it, it's very difficult to escape. Some people try, but they seldom succeed. You and Kit escaped. I did for a while. And Kit's escape was only temporary. So you see what I mean when I say it's difficult. Yeah, I, I see. Well, um, what kind of life do you think Kit has with me? Well, I mean, you two have problems, but, but, but you didn't cause them. So looking down the road, I think you've got a very good life together. What if things don't get any better? Well, even if they don't, you're, you're better off than most people. I mean, you look around. Look what a mess some lives are. Yeah, but I don't care about some lives. I just care about our lives. All right, all right. You look at it as, a, as a, a holding action. That's all right. I mean, once the pressure lets up, then you can see what you can make of your marriage. Yeah, but what if what I want to make of, of the marriage and, uh, is different from what Kit wants to make of the marriage? But you two think and feel alike, don't you? I, I, don't, I thought we did, but I don't know what it's like to have a million bucks in a bank. Joey, who have you been talking to? I can't believe it's Dad. No, Miranda. I should have known. Well, she was just telling me what she thought was right, just her own opinion. Listen, I don't know Miranda very well, but... I... I have the feeling that a person ought not to listen to her. Why? Because I think Miranda has got, has got an angle for everything. I promised myself I wouldn't even bring up the converter plant project. Well, actually, I had planned to bring it up myself. I think it's only fair that you know what my personal reservations are, T. And you've given it some more thought? Yes. Um, should we sit down and talk to you? That's fine that? with me. <laughs> All right, what is your latest thinking? Well, it's occurred to me that, of course, a project of this scope will take a considerable amount of time to complete. Uh, that's right. A lot of the equipment is just experimental, so it will require some research along the way. Yeah, well, that's what I figured. You're worried about Willis, aren't you? Yes. After all, he's expecting me to join him in Australia. If I do this job for you, it'll just be that much longer before I can get there. And you're not certain whether you really want to go at all. Well, you're very perceptive. May I make a comment about the situation? Sure. Well, Willis has a very good job with Corey Publishers there in Australia. It's an established firm with established contacts, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. She seems to have it made. And if you go to join him, you'll be starting at the bottom. I think I'll be starting a little below the bottom. Women are only now being accepted as competent there. You know, it took me so long to get where I am in this country. I have no idea how long it would take me there. 
It might take years. <sighs> and it might never happen at all. Well, Gwen, you're very good at what you do. And I believe that if you just stick with it long enough, you'll manage just fine. Unfortunately, I have this uh, feeling that I won't be able to manage no matter how good I am. What you're saying is you're just not sure about the marriage itself. Well, you certainly have a way of zeroing in on the truth, Taylor. Someone else? Um, I might be. Come on in. I guess we got our signals crossed. Well, Margot told me that she talked you into seeing me. It just got so late, I thought you'd changed your mind. I had a class. Look, I um, started putting all your stuff together. I want to talk to you, Blaine. Okay, let's talk. So who goes first? It's hard to know where to start. Well, maybe we ought to ask Margo. I mean, she's the one that wanted us to get together. Does that mean you don't want to? No, Jerry, I didn't mean it that way at all. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Depends on what they are. Well, let's start with the big one. The one that's really been tearing me up. If you can answer that honestly, maybe we can. Well, who knows? Go ahead, ask the question. There's another guy, isn't there? Yes. Have you been having an affair with him? No, Jerry. He never went that far, that's the truth. Really? Really. What's the matter? I just can't be touched right now. Blaine, I, 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 I still don't know the whole story. And if I jump to conclusions, the wrong conclusions, you have every reason in the world to be angry at me. I understood why you thought what you did. But if I was off base, then there's still hope for us. Don't you see that? No, I don't see it. Now I'm really confused. So am I. Do you love me? Mom says you do. Jerry, I love you more than I've ever loved anybody. The truth is, I really don't think I know what love is. Yes, you do, Blaine. I, I felt it so many times when we were together. You felt what I wanted you to feel. The truth is, I didn't marry you for love. Ask Sally. I told her that on our wedding day. You trying to tell me you've been pretending all this time? No, not pretending, really. At first, I liked being married. I, I like finding this place, and I like buying all the stuff for it, but I guess it just got old really fast. Well, you didn't seem unhappy to me. I guess it just took a while to come out. You know, when we got married, I didn't think I knew what it meant to be a cop's wife. And what I found out was that I really didn't care for it at all. You kept expecting me to be nice to all the other cop's wives, when in, in truth, they were as dull as dishwater. I kept having to go to all their boring parties. And on top of that, I had to cook you breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day, when most of the time, I didn't even know when you were coming home. Blaine, stop. You wanted the answers, Jerry. Now I'm giving them to you. No, know, you're talking about my life as a cop. I, I, I'm going to be a lawyer now. But it's going to be much worse from what I've seen so far. I can't believe this. It, 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 it just doesn't sound like you. Jerry, don't you remember all those times when I wanted to go out at night and have a little bit of fun? 
Don't you remember all those times when I wanted to have champagne instead of beer? Don't you remember how many times I said, just forget the budget for once so we can have a little bit of fun? Well, we did have fun. No, Jerry, you had fun. I was dying of boredom. I'm too young for that kind of life. I want excitement and action and pretty people. What you said? What I say one day may not have anything to do with the way I feel the very next. I thought I could be a happy housewife, but it didn't work. I was wrong. So now, you see, I've got to try something new. But, but people don't change overnight. Poor Jerry. You're probably wondering what happened to your nice little Blaine. I got sick of being nice. The truth is, I can't stay nice very long. Go ahead. Ask anybody. Ask Jamie, my ex-husband. Or for that matter, ask his mother, Rachel Corey. They'll tell you. I just can't stay nice very long. Jerry, this is Jordan Scott. Stay tuned for the conclusion of Another World. Nice to meet you. Jerry, we really have to get going. I'll call you later in the week. There's no need to. Yes, there is. I have to pick up my things, and I want to be sure to do it when you're not here. Suit yourself. Congratulations. For what? Taking care of business. Your husband's out of your life neat and tidy. Yes. That problem is taken care of. You say that like there's something else needs taken care of. There is. What's that? Blaine, you know me. If you have a problem, just let Jordan know, and he'll take care of it. I have a big problem. Even with your husband out of your life? Yes. Hit me with it. I want Buzz out of my life, too. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Another World.